So I was interested to see whether or not there was a genetic link between Richard and male line relatives who are alive today. Now we always knew at the outset that there might not be a genetic link and that's because we know from previous research that I and, and others have done that you get the possibility of non-paternity. So this is where the father, the biological father, is not who you think it is and that's going to break the Y chromosome link. And we know that that's a, there's a percentage for that that hovers around the 1-2% to mark. Still, we thought that this would be an interesting thing to do, just bearing in mind that given the number of generations that there might not be a match on their Y chromosomes. Richard uh, had no living descendants, so we can't trace either mitochondrial DNA or Y chromosome DNA directly from Richard. But what we can do in search of a Y chromosome is to go up a tree and then back down again. And that allowed us to identify a number of people by going up from Richard to Edward III and then back down again to John of Gaunt. And that goes on through the Earls and Dukes of Somerset and eventually to the Dukes of Beaufort. So doing the Y chromosome work, I found that there wasn't a link between Richard III and the male line relatives who are alive today. So clearly, though the genealogy says that they're male line related, the DNA is telling us that there has been a non-paternity or break in that Y chromosome chain between the fifth Duke of Beaufort, who is their common male line ancestor, and Richard III, which is 19 generations between them. The fact that we have a break means just that, we have a break. It doesn't mean that the skeleton isn't Richard because what we have is the very strong evidence triangulated with two living day relatives with the mitochondrial DNA. So that in itself is very strong, compelling evidence that the skeleton is Richard III. The break, however, does raise other questions, more of a historical nature than is this skeleton Richard. Now depending which link in the chain is broken and of course there's a possibility there could be more than one break. This asks questions about the Plantagenets and indeed the claims to the throne of both the houses of York and Lancaster. The majority of links in the chain, 13 out of the 19, do not affect royal descent at all. Additionally, one does indirectly. Now, of the remaining five links, the critical one is between Edward III and his son, John of Gaunt. If the break occurs here, then this asks questions about the legitimacy of John's son, Henry IV, and his subsequent heirs, Henry V and Henry VI. In addition, since the Tudor dynasty was descended also from John of Gaunt, there's an indirect influence over the Tudor's claim to the throne. Likewise, if the break is in the part of the chain from Edward III to Richard III, this would also ask questions about the legitimacy of the claims of both Richard and, of course, his brother Edward. But we have absolutely no proof for that. Um, as I've said, there are 19 links in this chain. Five of them could affect royal descent. So statistically, the chances are it actually has no effect at all, but it would be worthwhile investigating further to try and understand more fully where that breakage occurred.